Okay, I'm going to open this uh, meeting at being uh, just slightly after 7.30. Um, let everybody know this meeting is being recorded. Um, so we do have a uh, public hearing uh, continuation at 8 p.m. So um, I'm going to try to take care of some of our other items leading up to that. Chris, you're going to do the motions sure I got them why don't we do a motion for the minutes of April 19th you have that mr. Pierce I move that we accept the minutes of April 19th 2022 is written okay second okay I have a motion and a second any uh, comments questions or corrections mm -hmm. hearing none all in favor please say aye 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 opposed the record show four in favor no opposed Ryan is not with us this evening Mr. Pierce, I'm sorry, it's been a while since we've had a crowd. If anyone's here for the A&R, I'd like for them to sign in. Yeah, you can do that. So you pass it around. That's that, that's... If anyone's here for the A&R, people are not required to leave the industry. Well, anybody can, can anybody here can sign in. Anybody can sign in as being president of the meeting. You never know. Right. Um, all right. I think what I'd like to do, well, let's let's do this uh, the bond release for Grand Legacy. Has everybody read through that? Yep. Any, any issues, any questions on it? No. All right, go ahead, Chris. Mr. Pierce, yep. I move that Community Planning Commission vote to accept the April 13th, 2022 report from Design Consultants Incorporated and that the amount of $264,638.98 be established as sufficient to ensure the completion of the John. No, Jump. that's not John Beckett. It's it is Grand Legacy. Right? Yes, Grand Legacy. Grand Legacy subdivision. Do you have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Good. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. Any questions on any of it? Have you read through it? Comments? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Jeremiah, did you second? Yes, Jeremiah said yes. Opposed, how hearing none, uh, let the record show uh, four in favor, no opposed. Okay. Um, um, so, I think you might as well do the 78 Hamill Street, 135 Chestnut Street, A and R. Um, is, is a proponent for that here tonight? Oh. Oh, Peter, it's you. Good evening. My name is Peter Rogan, and I'm with Hayes Engineering, and I'm here with McCall to present the uh, approval on required plan to the North Reading. Peter, board. could you uh, go down to the microphone so the we can hear you just fine, but the uh, people at home at home can't. It's a major production. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Peter Rogan, and I'm with Hayes Engineering, and I'm here with McCall to present the. Uh, an a and plan to the North Reading Planning Board for signature. Um, I had gone over it briefly with Danielle and I had indicated that I would bring some chalks to kind of sh further show the board what's being done here. It's a little complicated in that there are a couple of titles here. Thank you. I think I have just enough. Thank you. Thanks. I would like Danielle to have one too. Thank you. There you go. So as I said, there are two titles here. Uh, they're in the family, but uh, but under a different name, and as such, they need to be handled as separate parcels as far as the deeds are concerned. So the first chart that I gave you showed the two separate titles. One of them is in Mr. Carl's. Paul's name as trustee and the other his wife. The, uh, the pink one is in Mr. McCall's name as trustee and the green one is in his wife's name. What is being proposed is to subdivide this uh, on an A&R basis into four lots. And the next chart shows you what, how those four lots would be. Those are the uh, orange lines. 
Uh, two of the lots are reduced frontage lots that are allowed under your bylaw, and two of them are standard lots. Uh, there is one common note on the plan over on the right hand side, which takes a portion of the McAuliffe land and adds it to the uh, the Weiss land in order to create a limited frontage lot uh, of two, two parcels from the uh, uh, the husband's piece. I think that kind of explains what we're doing. The only other aspect of the plan that's, uh, I think, important as far as the board is concerned is that we would like to, to keep the right to have a common drive off of Havel Street for the, the standard frontage lot and the existing dwelling. Uh, it's anticipated that that might well go to a family member and uh, the common drive would work out well, well for them. So we've indicated on the plan that there's a uh, easement for uh, a proposed easement for a, uh, a common drive in that uh, first uh, uh, panhandle of land, which is the reduced frontage lot, with the existing dwelling on it. The existing dwelling uh, is designed to remain where it is, and the existing septic system is designed to remain where it is. Although I understand your regulations require a 120-foot diameter circle. We have shown that on the plan, um, but it's anticipated that the house stays where it is, the septic system stays where it is, and there's actually another out structure on the, on the parcel too um, that will, will remain. And, and that's 250, 250 circle. What's that? 250 foot circle. Uh, yeah, what did I say, 200? 125, yeah. 250 foot circle. It's right there, it's, it's, on, the, it's on the drawing. Sorry. Yes. Okay. And I believe Danielle has the mylar, right? We do. Yeah, okay. So um, um, the common driveway, it, the, uh, or that, that 50 foot right of way, um, not terribly in favor of common driveways. There appears to be enough room there. You could give individual driveways. Is there any reason you didn't, other than perhaps a conservation situation? There is. I think that uh, uh, there's a very minor wetland at the very front, and uh, that's one reason for perhaps being desirous of the common drive. But if the lot stays in the family, or at least as long as it stays in the family, uh, I think a common drive is probably desirable. Mm -hmm. um, I understand what you're saying, and, and uh, we're all only tenants here, I understand that too. So mm -hmm. that sometime it won't be in the family, and maybe mm -hmm. a, a common drive will be applied for. But for right now, they could access it from that one drive. Yeah, I've already seen the result of one where it was fine 20 years ago when it was done, but then when the, uh, everybody changed hands, suddenly it was who plows it, how come you didn't plow it, and exactly. you know, well, you're supposed to plow it. And, I understand that, and I've talked to Mr. McAuliffe about that and said that uh, if we keep it as a common drive, uh, I, I said in my presentation that we wanted the option to do that. If we keep it as a common drive and it does get sold off, um, he needs to be sure that they work out a common drive plan that indicates how the cost will be shared and who will do what and so forth. Uh, I mean, I think common drives can work, but I understand that they can also be a basis for some some uh, so, if I may disappear. Yeah. Peter, on that 50 foot um, easement, is there room to put two driveways right next to each other? Yeah, there is. That's, that's my question because I think he was talking about the wetlands in the front of that property. I don't see any wetlands in that 50 foot right of way. Oh, well, there's no wetlands in the 50 foot right of way. I you understand sure what I'm saying about putting, the, putting them right side by side and putting some buffer or put a drain in between them? We've done that, we did that on Haverhill Street. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a common drive with my grandparents. Everything was great until my cousins moved in. And then it was, it was terrible. So family doesn't matter, okay? I wasn't living there at the time, but it was, it was really a, a horror show for my parents. So common drives can work, but they also don't always work. Well, we could we could put two drives there, but still would involve um, 
uh, a permit from uh, conservation to uh, uh, act within the 12 foot buffer zone that they have or have a fill. Well, you have the option of doing some amount of filling there too for access. So I, I think that perhaps the, the, um, um, <coughs> that the discretion is I think the better part would be to put it put the two driveways in and yeah. not, not ever not ever introduce that issue to anybody that lives there. Well we can't fit two driveways yep, uh, of the required width uh, in the uh, uh, 50 foot. If we were to do that uh, I think we'd probably want to separate them as soon as possible because I think it looks kind of funny but um, you know. Yeah, there's no, also going to be um, there's also going to be some kind of an easement granted to that lot for that driveway as well. I think there's, be, uh, there looks like a driveway easement is there already. Or they well, going to, they, they uh, proposing we're, we're one. suggesting a driveway easement. Right, right. Foot. right. It's not there yet. No, no so that, but that's they own the property, so it's easy to, for the owners today to put that easement in. It's not like you've got to go begging to somebody else to do it. That's correct. Today, yeah. Today's the right time to do it before you build it. Right, right. I just think a second driveway, it takes away any of those headaches, um, you know. And who says what the driveway has to be made out, right, Warren? We don't have a we don't have a, a specification on that. So. Yeah. Well, I don't think that anybody would be interested in gravel at this point. Not not, not with the length of it there. Yeah. yeah. You're going to want to have a, a real uh, driveway then. So. Um, Mr. McCall, do you have any thoughts on that? Is so having two driveways and a panhandle. Or mm -hmm. I have no objection to having two. Mm -hmm. It's the best. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, I understand today's family may work. My, my, my father and mother and my grandparents were fine. When that house moved to, to my other part of the family, it just didn't work out. It's not worth it. Yeah. Hey, anybody else? Uh, David, anything? I don't yeah. find anything to plug in, but I, I mean, yeah. other than what you guys went over. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about the summit driveway? Um, this isn't necessarily a public hearing, um, but um, I'll take a couple of questions just in the interest of uh, knowledge. What what is you have? And you please state your name. Uh, my name is C.O.D. I live at 76 Payroll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about putting two driveways there side by side? Is that within the 50 feet? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yes, yeah, so they're within the 50 feet. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Is there a way you can talk into that other mic as well? They're right there. Sorry. They'll hear you on TV. Um, I think the answer to your question is, is yes, they'll both fit so in just fine. They have to hold up, retain the 50 feet for that parcel, though, correct? To have the minimum frontage? Um, they have to have 50 feet of minimum frontage? No, well, yeah, that, that there is 50 feet that was already there. Right, but if you put two sideways. Driveway side by side, are you then splitting the land no, and giving no. some to the other? Nope. Okay. No, there's no splitting of the land. What happens is the driveway, the, the main driveway will go to the, the, the lot in the back there, and the lot in the front there will have its own driveway that comes up, and an easement will be granted to that particular lot driveway. from this mm -hmm. lot to allow them to keep the driveway there. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Yep, that, that's how it works. Okay. All right, uh, any, any, anything else? You guys all set? So, they are. so um, Mr. Chairman, just a question on the, on the 250 circle. Can, is it typically you would have the building and septic inside that 250? So in case of that lot where you have the existing structure, the existing septic, structure yeah. and you're yeah. not inside that, what is. Uh, well, typically the idea is to have the property in the upland section of it. Yeah. And a lot of times it's, we've, uh, if it was a subdivision, uh, which has a, a little different set of rules there. We would, in fact, have to have everything inside that, and would have to be all, all upland, or, an, or enough upland in order to put the, the house, the house and septic and whatever else needs to be there. So um, um, we don't have that same restriction here because we're simply creating the lot. Um, don't mean that. Right. You all set, Danielle? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, Mr. Hayden, if you Mr. Pierce, please. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse as approval not required the plan entitled Plan of Land in North Reading, Mass, dated May 5, 2022, drawn by Hayes Engineering Incorporated. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. 
Uh, any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. And uh, Mr. Carroll is absent from here. Thank you all very much for coming. If Thank you are uh, certainly uh, willing to stay for the rest of the meeting, Peter, you have something? Thank you very much. Good to see you all again. Yep, yeah. Uh, when do we pick up the mylar? I mean, we don't need to wait for the board to sign it now. But... Oh, um, do you want yeah. to do you want to do the signatures now? No. Can they do or, it? Uh, I, I, I don't, we don't need to. Oh, we can either do it now or we can do it after Peter. Be ready tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll be ready tomorrow. We'll sign Because the driveway is really Yeah. Be ready tomorrow, right, Debbie? What? The, the mylar, everything will be ready for I, I have the mylar if you want to sign it. Yeah. Okay. You, you want to wait for Peter? We don't have to do it now, though. It doesn't have to be right now. We usually do it. We have plenty of time. Yeah, we have time. We have time for you to take a seat. Yeah, we have 13 minutes before our public hearing. Oh, the next one. Okay. So if you can't sign a mylar in a couple of <laughs> drawings in that much amount of time, we got to go back to school. Yeah. Okay. I've been, been practicing for 30 years, Peter. I can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as long as you can come. Here. Yeah, we'll go. Well, we'll go. Go. You got 10 minutes. And then they can go home. No, no, no. How many trees did you kill? This year. You should have sent it to us on our electronic uh, order. Oh. oh, come on now. It's all that's in my house. So just just briefly, uh, you don't know if you have to vote on this or not, but on the warrant will be a, um, a request for a, we're going to hire a consultant to help us out with the swan pond. I'm not sure if CPC has to vote on this or not, but we want to make it aware of what we're doing. Um, so this is kind of a courtesy call, just to say. Uh, let me introduce you to the one of three members on the first committee, Dr. Allison Polito. She just recently got a doctorate, so very proper. This is her first time doing this, so I thought I'd come down. 
a little moral support, but she doesn't need moral support. She needs me to leave her alone. So, uh, moral, so moral support's appreciated. Thank you. you so she's leaving. Uh, she's we handed out some slides for you to look at so you can see. Yeah, one. this should hopefully be very quick. Um, what we're asking for is hopefully pretty straightforward. Um, so our interest is in the Swan Pond Forest area. It's an area that was um, noted to be uh, of interest by the, the community in the Open Space Recreation Plan of 2020. Um, so we do have some public support for our project here, or improvements here. Um, and there is historically um, some stewardship by the Forest Committee. We don't own any of the land. Uh, it's owned by the general government. It's owned by the um, Conservation Commission and the School Committee. But um, in the recent history, anyway, the Forest Committee has kind of overseen projects in this area. You may or may not remember the, the Forest Street Cutting Program that was done in like the early 2000s or early 2010s, um, not what this project is, but just you know showing that we have done work in this area before. Um, currently, the Swan Pond Forest area is very underutilized. Um, a lot of people don't even know it exists. I didn't know it existed until I joined the Forest Committee, and my husband and I are pretty avid hikers. Um, and this lack of awareness does come with some issues. So. Uh, if you walk through there, you can see that people dump trash there, um, especially uh, you know after the holidays. You can see all people's Christmas trees, which is okay, I guess, but other trash as well. Um, there are a lot of unauthorized motorized vehicles going through there, like ATVs that are really tearing up the, the area. Um, and you can see trash bottle, um, sorry, like beer bottles that people leave out after drinking in there. Uh, and there's not enough parking space, even for people who do know about it, they can't really access it. There's the one road and you can kind of park on the side, but it's not really great or safe. Um, and along those lines, there's no real fire or safety access um, should it be needed. Um, so we're hoping to increase awareness. Um, first off, uh, it's town owned land, and it would be great if the public knew more about it. Uh, and we are hoping to increase public use, but in a more controlled manner. Um, and towards this effort, we're hoping to hire a professional consultant group. Um, we looked into kind of doing this ourselves and realized it was a little, we were a little out of our depth to really assess the terrain. Um, so we're hoping to uh, really uh, identify the land boundaries between the stakeholders, um, and get a good grasp of who owns exactly which sections, um, we also want to make sure that we're staying well clear of abutters. Um, and we're also looking into the trail system that's in place. Um, and part of that reason is we're hoping to improve some of these trails, uh, especially um, increased trail accessibility, um, widening the trails and making the surface so that like wheelchairs can access it. Um, and yeah, just make it more accessible to the, the whole town. Um, and so uh, the consultant that we're hiring, we're hoping that they will give us um, formal conceptual plans. We've had a lot of interest from local scouting groups, both boy and girl scouts, that we're ready to jump right in and help, but we don't have a great idea of what exactly needs to be done yet. Um, and we've also reached out to Essex Agricultural School, and they would be interested in taking on some um, projects, some maintenance projects like, um, for their forestry students. But again, we have to have the designs the formal designs in place already for them to go off of. Um, so in order to hire a consultant, um, we looked around and uh, found that we needed a, about six, up to $65,000 um, in order to hire a consultant. And so that would be just to assess the current trail system in the Swan Pond Forest area and provide conceptual plans for trail improvement. So it's not actually to do any work, but rather just to understand what we have and how we can make it better for the town. I'll just add, uh, there's three, you know, the, we're talking about uh, uh, three stakeholders in this. It's the uh, Conservation Commission, it's the school school, uh, school zone part of the land, and then the town part of the land. So part of the mapping was to be sure that everything's delineated and, you know, we're not stepping anybody's toes or doing anything we haven't done before. So uh, that's the main goal. And then, uh, yeah, you already mentioned Essex Aggie. So the point is, is that, uh, you know, you're obviously at some point we maybe produce materials for signage, things of that nature. But beyond that, we're looking to get volunteers. Actually, this is a natural thing that happens. Once people get interested in understanding what we're doing, it's very natural to get support from the community. And it turns into a friends of type situation on the one. But Swan Pond, again, I myself I didn't know until I got on the forest committee 
the Swan Pond was even about. And then Dana Rowe, who's the chair of that committee, walked me through this beautiful area. You know, mm -hmm. just a little bit of improvement, we can make it, you know, a really pristine area for the town. Uh, but also make it professional and make it accessible for many people that don't exist now. So that's the request. And again, I don't know if you need to vote for it. But glad to take questions, whatever you'd like to. Well, I just wondered about a couple things. Um, sure. The cutting program, is it still active? Yeah, the um, economics of the forest, uh, that's been on hold, so they've done two of the three parts. There is another part that needs to happen, um, but right now the economics of doing that does not matter uh, because we don't have a big budget for that. So, um, and it would require, I think, another vote at this point, like the... They have um, to re-approach the state to spec it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so one, 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 one of the issues that comes to mind is um, if you get a lot of... Um, brush and everything up there and if you don't do some kind of cleanup forest fire we all through there and if you got if you look at things like all the warming and drying out of the mm -hmm. of that forest there's this the, the, you know there's increased danger so you don't get the understudy out of there in some cases and you get out uh, um, and that fire safety is definitely one of the reasons yeah, for yeah. doing this we had a lot of interest from the scouts to do trail maintenance and we realized we don't even have a map of our trails like yeah. to give them to do maintenance well, I think Essex Aggie is, a, is really uh, probably a good a good fit because uh, I'm sure that first of all they have students that are in the forestry program, and, and if you um, could take advantage of, of, as much as possible of their interest in, 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 and perhaps even some expertise from the instructors there to get you uh, to get you for get you or moving forward uh, regardless if the, if the funding comes through or not, you know. So um, Dana Rowe actually is a, an alumnus of them, their yep. program, and he reached out to them, and they said they would need formal plans, um, mm -hmm. that they don't do the planning portion of it. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. it is, uh, at least we need a little bit of a plan in place before they would do anything in that area for it or to help us. Well, the other, the other thing that comes to mind would be that our GIS system that can provide you with some uh, overheads and some perhaps some mapping of some of the trails, which would give you an opportunity to get something done should you not succeed with the funding or something. You know those? Yeah, he just started um, with a new person in town, It starts with a B, and I apologize, I can't pronounce it. Um, Michael. Yes. Oh, there you go, you yes. know. Yeah. His last name, I Apparently has a long list of things to do, so. Big easy, and I think. <laughs> so we're hoping to buy the town meeting we're going to have at least an overview of what well, looks so like our area. I'm going to hazard but a guess. may not get more detail than that. I'm going to hazard a guess. Most of the trails in there are either animal, or kids just walking through. Or, uh, or motorcycles. Yeah. ATVs. Yeah, they have been going nuts in there. Because they're fighting with this motorcycle. Yeah. Because I do live on Swan Pond Road, but down oh. near the cemetery. Oh, there you go. And we have many people that walk up there from, from yeah. our house. Yeah. So, so the question on the, on the 65, how much of that is for a property line survey or doing topo or of the 65 route? Um, and how many yeah, acres, how many right? acres is the Swan Pond? It was in two parts. And, and, and by the way, we it was a long search to find consultants who actually do this. Yes. Right. Um, and it was really hard to find somebody who actually does this. So we, find, we found one out of Cape Cod. Of course, we built the new does the trail. process of doing it. Did you contact yeah, the master 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 Oh, yeah, we went through okay. the Foundation. Um, we tried calling some towns that have done similar work to get their consultants. Right. Um, word of mouth from other consultants uh, and everyone either uh, their plates were full or a lot of times there were requirements we couldn't meet like it either included more than one town or was a mode of transportation you know like a bike path kind of thing um, so a lot of this stuff can be qualified for but rich that's you know without having to look it up but that's kind of what you need to do for what the, the write-up was you need to find those property lines understand where they are mm -hmm. right and then have you guys, I know the cutoff for mass trails was Monday for the grants mm -hmm. for this year. Would that be something you, that you try to do for 2023, I guess? Um, because We didn't qualify for any of their grants. Oh, yeah. That, for, that was know, the issue. For what reason, though? Um, for either one, the, the size of the project, the scope of the project, like the criteria. Yeah, I um, spoke with someone at length, and we just... It's, At the it, moment, don't it's interesting too because you we should probably follow up on it because looking i just read through all 52 of the grants from last year and they there's at least one third of them that fit exactly the description of what we're trying to do 
we're trying to do planning, uh, wayfinding, development, survey, engineering, and there, if you read the grants, I can send you Rich the PDF, I have your email, yeah. um, but it lists them all. Mm -hmm. So it seems like, and they're not big, you know, it's 18 grand with a match of three or something like that if the scope is 25 or something like, you know, it's not, they're not huge, but they do give up to, as it says here, $300,000, but you know, they help they do that all the time. Mm -hmm. But most of them are very small which would be in your wheelhouse and maybe not fund at all, but a lot of it. So we should try we to do that. We got, we got we did, yeah, we, I mean, we did contact them. Uh, I'm just wondering if, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's like any, in one of our reps or whatever could help. It's maybe, the way, maybe the way that we're pitching what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. We're crushing yeah. the wrong right. way. Sure. the magic word, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. But that's, that's <laughs> also, I think that's great. Yeah. Love hiking, love trails. So. It's already there. So what is one of the issues, it sounds to me like a, um, the focus on, on um, delineating the lines so that we, so you, will you not be able to do trails of things that are on, for example, the school committee land? So historically, I think they've been pretty amenable to what the forest co committee has wanted to do, but right. the, the cutting project, everyone was amenable to that. I think it would depend on the size of the project. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things we had talked about that is not finalized and not really part of this is, you know, would we be able to build a parking lot somewhere? And that might have to be a bigger discussion with each of the stakeholders because mm -hmm. potentially one of them might not want it. Mm -hmm. you might, in other words, you, you probably you might have to limit your construction of anything like that to town-owned land where the town could say, right. okay, exactly. as opposed to having yeah. to go through the school department or, <clears throat> or any private, yeah. any of the private owners so we have we have extended you know the same uh, offer to the school committee coming to them yeah. to discuss this and also well the select board has already heard about it so they're, they're good. the conservation committee yeah right and so we're going to meet with them in a week or two yeah. but yeah, yeah once we have that spec then we're going to obviously go back to formalize my it. my uh, i thought it's probably that conservation is probably going to be a little difficult because the, they don't want you disturbing the wetland area <laughs> So, uh, so I, I suppose delineating what belongs to them and, and working around it probably is a necessary necessary evil, if you will. I think if they take a, uh, they will when they take a walk with us and see what's going on with no supervision and then realize that we're actually going to help it, not hurt. Okay. So yeah. I would suspect that's necessary. And at, at the moment, this particular project is really just information gathering and, and design planning. Like, Obviously, if we did any next steps, we would have to go back to all of these stakeholders. Okay, this, is, this isn't something we would necessarily take a vote on, but I could certainly get a consensus. Do you, do you support this, uh, Jeremiah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, actually, before we bought our current house, we looked at a property uh, in that area, and driving through some of the, those roads and everything, I was like, I don't even feel comfortable owning property in this area. So, <laughs> yeah, you're back in the back 40 there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it felt like a little kind of forgotten part of town. And so to me, that's it. for us to get a little organization around it. It's worth it. Dave, how about you? I'll uh, definitely. Yeah, very support. Support. Okay. Yeah. Yes, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd say yes, too. I mean, I, in my younger days, I spent a lot of time up there in the dirt bike. So, uh, I know you, you, you made a lot of those trails, I'm sure. <laughs> Just dirt bike? This yeah. Time wasn't time. They didn't have any TVs back when he was running. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not, it's the dirt bike. So. <laughs> so, thank you very much for coming in and sharing right. that with us. We have a consensus from us that we would support this. So, um, um, that should uh, that, that'll help out. And uh, if we get a chance, I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk to some of the pals and see what we can find out. That'd be great. Thank great. you. Okay. Anybody who wants a tour, but just ask them. I'd be glad to take one. I'm so knowledgeable about the area. Yeah. So. Don't worry, we've talked. We've done a lot with Dana. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. No thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Um, let's go to couple uh, fourteen coffee. Well, hello. Yeah. This man, how are you? Very well, well, and you? Good. Great. So I, we received uh, comments from the traffic um, part of the review, and then I had sent you a response that we had from PI, but I brought intentionally a whole bunch of copies. So okay. I didn't know. Sometimes when I upload it here at the meeting, it doesn't, it's it not doesn't viewable to everyone. So um, I basically have provided for you 
a response from our traffic engineer relative to the G, um, G2 uh, comment letter that we received yesterday. Uh, obviously, we were able to respond pretty quickly because there were very few comments, you know, of any true magnitude. Um, and if, if I may, I'm just going to go quickly through it and then turn it over to Luke to address the comments from um, from G2 relative to zoning, site, and then um, stormwater. So basically, as you can see from the G2 report, they basically concur that the traffic is traffic report is accurate, that the site is able to be accessed safely. And then what, what G2 had asked for is some modifications or clarifications, I should say. And that's all that's really provided in this report. Um, you know, they asked about the traffic counts. Basically, um, you know, did you adjust them seasonally? And when we took the counts, we took them Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but we didn't take them to establish the volume of traffic. We did it to establish the um, rate of speed, which was why it's actually better to take them on a Saturday because people tend to go a little faster then. Um, but that was all explained and responded to in the first comment to G2. And then the second comment was simply, again, just kind of uh, depicting the track accounts, yeah, yeah, so one and two are both the same. Collision, crash history, it was just a confirmation. Um, site distance, so this was, if, if you remember, and I think um, the board asked a few questions about this, about how we were going to handle site distance, and Rebecca answered that, and then you were waiting to see what your response was from your traffic engineer. And the site mitigation measures that were suggested by um, GPI were actually endorsed by your, your peer consultant. And then they just asked for us to provide more details, like where are you gonna move that sign? Remember how we had said that there's a sign and people probably think it's a 35 mile an hour speed limit because the sign is literally behind a group of trees? She just showed where we're gonna relocate that sign, which is a 30 mile an hour speed limit. I mean, yes, 30. Um, and then she did also, she being Rebecca Brown from GPI, provided in the package that you have, um, and this is something this entire board said was a good idea, the repainting of those, the lines in the street to be able to improve site distance. So she just provided a plan of that. And you know what I did do? Because I personally am too old to be able to see it. I, couldn't, I could not read the plan. I had to zoom on my computer. So what I did was I zoomed for you and then printed, oh, you're looking right now, Mr. Pierce, aren't you? I, I zoomed and then printed out the zoom. Thank you. So that I could actually see it. I'm sure the computer. Right oh my gosh, you should see the size they have to make the computer screen. It's embarrassing. You gotta stop wearing glasses. Then. I do wear glasses. It's like they don't even work anymore. Well, you gotta get glasses for the computer, which are bigger. <laughs> I have a set of those. Uh, yeah, I want to say I'm 29 twice. So. Anyhow, um, <laughs> so that I provided that for you. Um, and in general. I know you have to read it, I'm not trying to rush you through that, but in general, the traffic report really was simply confirmed and accepted by, um, by G2. And again, your suggestions were also recommended by G2. And unless you have specific questions about that, I'm going to turn it over to Luke to go through those comments that um, we did receive from G2 relative to the site plan storm water, and then I think Luke also addressed the comments that the planner had and um, the fire department as well as the police department too, because we talked about items that are a whole bunch of stuff that Luke responded yeah. to. So he's just gonna show you some of the modifications that we um, made it's really to the notes on the plan. There really weren't any changes necessitated by any of the comments. So, Luke. There you go, thanks Jill. Um, yeah, so the comments that we received from G2 as far as the site, uh, site plan review um, were mainly having to do with uh, informational, providing more details on, on some things. I don't know if that's all right in that angle there. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of comments that really changed the, the layout of the site or relocating things that we had to address. Um, there was some things like adding a, a 50 foot wetland buffer to the plan, um, looking at identifying the model of a, a stormwater treatment unit and being more specific in detail on that. Uh, there was 
a comment having to do with the uh, ADA accessible route to each of the buildings and just clarifying basically added some additional spot grades just to make it clear that we're conforming to those requirements for sloping and the uh, accessible not only the spaces but the aisles uh, and the routes to the buildings um, there was a number of thing items in the stormwater report that just required some additional detail uh, having to do with the um, the test pit log reference uh, sediment for bay volume calculations we just added some additional area information so that that those volumes were clear um, and that was in our response letter um, TSS removal calculations again was something that was a detail item in the, one of the appendices of the stormwater report um, pipe sizing calculations and groundwater uh, bounding analysis all of these things are now included in the uh, in, or further detailed really in the revised stormwater report that we submitted and the operation and maintenance plan again um, so the majority of their comments had to do with detail in the stormwater report which we provided um, on the cover sheet there was a couple things just having to do with zoning um, making it clear as far as this block this site and the setback requirements um, <coughs> correcting a note uh, adding some additional um, clarification on the screening and uh, the fuel tank location relative to the uh, aquifer protection district boundary and one of the comments with the fire department and we did meet with the fire department and talked about in uh, fire hydrant locations in, internal to the site so we're proposing actually two hydrants one in this location here and one over here um, and that basically meets the requirement as far as 500 feet in between and the distance to each of the buildings and uh, the requirements that they were asking for and lastly we provided a basically the fire truck maneuvering it's a separate uh, attachment that we submitted just showing the fire truck apparatus turning movement like a swept path through the site um, like for building a coming through and it, this one's very clear where it can maneuver easily through the site the back building and when we met with the fire department we talked to them about how that would be more of a a pull a t-turn where they pull in and back out they just wanted to see that shown on that maneuvering <coughs> diagram how that would be achieved so uh, so we've submitted that um, and, and that's really the summary on the on the changes we've made um, I have the full revised set here obviously the colored uh, grading and drainage plan but um, if there's any other questions at this point that the commission has we're happy to answer those and so you've uh, you've uh, just recently submitted this change this plan then with all the changes on it um, all the updates just yesterday okay. yeah right so it's up for review still yeah so we received the review i think it was like a week or so prior to that right got the rev revisions <laughs> done as fast as we could right submitted them yesterday and uh, we wanted to at least take the opportunity to update yeah. the board on where we're at with the reviews we received and our responses um, and also receiving the traffic review we just responding to that today obviously so mm -hmm. yep. yeah. so the infamous dumpster that building uh, B that that's they're talking about conservation taking a break that they was close to the Stormwater basin. Uh, that was. What was that? Was so that, that was G two. That was a comment they had that. That's back there next to the storm the basin. Right. Yeah. And I looked at like 
where the parking layout was <coughs> and I just didn't I think this is a good location um, in a lot of ways and I didn't see another feasible location I'm, I'm not I'm not yeah you know I, I just wanted to make sure that what I was looking at here because you don't have it highlighted as on the plan I might be just looking at the wrong plan that's all I was, that's um, no, yeah, 3.3, comment 3. Yeah, um, no, no, I was looking at the actual plan. Okay. I can see him this year. <laughs> I was looking at the big one. Um, okay. It's, and, and it's okay. I mean, you know, we have that requirement it's going to be a concrete pad. I mean, easily, you can, I know they're, talking, they're worried about, you know, when it rains. Yeah. That it's going to wash into the stormwater without going through treatment. Right. You can always, you got to put it on a concrete pad, lift it a little bit, curve it, you know, right. and, I, and, I, and then just, and then, and then bring it back into the, into the, to the drive. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you that know, was kind of my response to it, that if you, it'll be pitched towards the, pitch it towards the driveway, you can curve it, you know, you kind of, you do a whole built concrete curve, and then you got to fence around the outside of that, because yep. they need to be fenced also to keep the trash from blowing around multiple <laughs> Because it is, it is terrible that stuff blows around like crazy. Um, and you can't stop the wind. Yep. But, I, I, I mean, I didn't, I just, I wanted to make sure that's what we were that's talking about. That's it, yeah, I'm sorry. I was at the same spot. It's building B. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any further questions or comments in the board? So all the, the ones that you mentioned, uh, like the fire <coughs> the hydrants and using auto turn shown truck access all that that just submitted back to them Luke and you're just waiting for them to confirm that was just, that was direction you got from fire department or from interior it's, it's been submitted it's been returned to G2 for a review oh, to make the sure. hydrants and the fire the fire turning was that was the fire department, fire department. okay and but that was also part of what we just submitted yesterday okay so. G2 didn't comment on that. On that, okay. That's kind of outside there. Yeah, I and mean, just making sure it's that's who really matters really is the fire department. Yeah. Then they must get this new information also, right? The peer reviewer? I forwarded everything. Luke, the fire department. Oh, the fire department. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can I can send it. Luke, what do you use in auto turn for a fire truck? What size, or is it just designated as average fire truck? Do they do a ladder like size? Or well, they provided with they provided the yeah. that, right? So the fire department, yeah. and there, I think it's kind of a standard memo. Yeah, they, they got a standard memo. Yeah. It's like 42 foot long, like the ladder truck, 10 feet wide. And I picked a vehicle in the, the software that was WB slightly more than that. It yeah. was like 45 feet yep. long, yep. nine and a half wide, pretty close. Yep. So it was uh, it's the close, closest match that we Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Daniel, we probably anticipate a response from this in the next week or so? Yeah, I would think so. I can prepare a conditional approval for the next <laughs> week. We are still before the Conservation Commission, so that you know, so we are going to be dependent upon when we get through theirs. I don't know if you want us to wait till we get through that to see if there's any additional comments or how you want to handle that. So D2 will probably, G2 will probably respond. G2 would probably respond before. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I feel like I'm, I'm coming around here. Really we're going both ways. It's I'll move. Silly. It's fine. Do you want to be a good one? Yeah, I'll move. So G2 probably is going to respond before yeah. we get Conservation before the cons come yeah. again. And we get before the cons come, it's the second Wednesday, Luke said, of the month. So yeah. it's June 10th? Around the, yeah, I'm not okay. sure exactly. But. Don't we usually go our. our uh, if, if they come out with a negative response, then it doesn't really matter what we I don't, I don't think that's really the issue would be if, oh, they, yeah, if they required some physical change to the to the, to the uh, plan, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, something yeah. that so would change the drainage characteristics. Right. Where you could have to recalculate, and that's that's what would be the issue. So, so that's a fair question, and uh, and probably best if we uh, wait until after your conservation hearing, and if everything looks good, then. At our next meeting, we could finish this off. That's for sure, because we've already responded to DEP's comments. We don't anticipate, you know, having many more things to respond to. And, and so, when is your when is your conservation meeting? It's, it's the second Wednesday. 
Oh, Second Wednesday is the 8th I'm not sure. of June. No, oh, and okay. and the, the filing date for them is the 10th, which is Friday. It's just like us, I'm sure. Okay. It gives them a, a couple of days to get everything together. So you do it early and you don't have the stuff together, it gets a... See, we filed already a response with them. So we're we just waiting. Also, yesterday we submitted revised plan and a response letter to, to conservation okay. and DEP. So. Most of their comments were through DEP, and that had to do mo mostly with the crossing, the wetland crossing, mm -hmm. yeah. providing more detailed like alternatives analysis. Right. Um, some of the information on the, the, the there's a little intermittent stream there, and that we're providing enough of a culvert yeah. crossing and all that. So. Danielle, we're first and third. Correct. Excuse me. Right. So this. So the... we're, we're going to be the day before they're having theirs. <laughs> So yeah, the twenty first is probably the, the twenty first would be the, our second. Yeah. 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 So, I think we could the twenty second would be easy for us to make. Well, the twenty first would would be ours. Oh, the twenty first, but we're going to be before that. We're going to be. You're going to be before that on the eighth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say if we want to to extend this, we could extend it to the twenty first or whatever, and then and then you could uh, and then we could be pretty sure you'll be through everything, and and that would. Yeah, and, and, and it also gives you an opportunity to make any corrections should one be required. Exactly. Okay. That way we can round it all up at the end of June. Okay. Very good. So, um, okay, so this is a, a continued public hearing. If, is there any comments from the public for this? The hearing none will continue um, until, will continue until uh, June 21st. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Mr. Pierce. Mr. Hayden. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the requested continuance of the public hearing for 14 Concord Street until Tuesday, June 21st at 8 p.m. Have a motion to have a second? Okay, David Redloff second it. So, um, any further questions on it? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a month. All right. Enjoy the weather. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Chris, do you have the um, notice for the DNA? Uh, nope. I never read it, actually. You don't have to. I mean, you know, we don't have to read that, for sure. But you did not give it to me. I have my motions. Maybe you did and I missed it, but I don't think so. Oh, are you just looking for it? Well, maybe, well, oh, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> that's just the, that's the agenda. Did I give it to someone else? You did not give it to me. <laughs> no, it will be on your, it will be in the paper she gave you. Yeah, no, I didn't. You didn't get it either? I think you, I think you don't have it. It's not in the, uh. It's lost, Debbie. <laughs> you never lose anything. Okay, we get a couple ZBAs. Uh, but so. huh. Oh, <laughs> the ZBAs are just kind of FYI because their meeting already happened. We were off schedule, uh, okay, so, well. yeah. Okay, so we're not going to do the ZBAs. <laughs> so, so, do they have a meeting this week? They met, uh, when were those? Uh, uh, I think last week? I think they met. Uh, yeah. So, that means we, uh, we are, okay, we have a plenty of administrative update left, and that's it. Sure. Um, so just a few things. Uh, May 24th is the Economic Development Committee's event um, this year at the Horseshoe. I uh, sent out an uh, email invitation. Um, feel free to share it around. Um, we're planning on having a sewer update from uh, the DPW and the town administrator. Um, then uh, June 1st is the informational hearings for warrant articles. Um, we don't have an article this time around, but I'll be there just because our budget and because I mm -hmm. always go. Um, so if anyone wants to go, that's fine. If not, that's also fine. Um, I saw the list of capital projects today. Um, our Central Street uh, sidewalk request was not on it, um, which I wasn't terribly surprised by, but um, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, we can keep asking for it. The town engineer and I will just keep asking for it every year cool. till, till it happens, I suppose. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, so for the, uh, we were looking at the calendar. It hasn't quite been a full year yet since we did our officer elections. And um, 
board and liaison assignments. So um, if we do that on June 21st, that'll be a year. So if that's the, the night that we would like to do that, I uh, just wanted to mention that. And also wanted to mention that um, the EDC representative from the CPC is, is, is among those that, you know, we always, I know Chris always does it. I don't know, Chris, if you want to break this year. I just, it, it I might love be. a break. So I just wanted I, I to mention it. I might still go to meetings as an alternate, but, but I, It's know. sure, but it's, it's, it's a lot of boards I, I, that you're I, on. I, so I, I just wanted to bring it up in case anyone was interested in thinking about that, um, just to give you plenty of time. I'm sorry? I said, they can put their hand up and I'll step aside. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just to be thinking about it if you're interested in that. Um, the sewer study is ongoing uh, with Kleinfelder. We sent out um, this week a small study, uh, survey, sorry, to um, the larger property owners and businesses along Concord and Main um, with a survey targeted at them. And then in the next few weeks, we'll be sending out a, a communication to, um, to, to everybody, you know, residents and businesses um, to get some more, uh, you know, information out. Um, about this. Um, what are you looking to get from the larger landowners versus the, you know, the average Joe, if you want to um, in the roof on the roof? Well, so for the landowners, so I say largest, but really it was targeted at any landowner who we really felt could more, you know, be more likely to have potential for their property to be redeveloped or expanded in some way. So some, in some cases, they're, they might be small properties or really little businesses or very underutilized properties, but we thought, hmm, maybe if there's sewer there, there might really be potential for there to be something else there. So that was sort of um, kind of a targeted list. We went through, you know, DPW director and myself and the assessor and the consultant kind of went through and we tried to pick out a set of um, owners that we could target and we were able to, you know, the consultant called to get you know, an email address so that we could get a, a survey out to them. Um, but they'll be looking at all of the properties and doing a build out analysis of everything. But we're hoping to get some good input from those who may be inclined to do something more with their properties. Um, so that will be ongoing for the next uh, few weeks. Um, and I saw recently, um, went to a facilities master plan meeting um, and, uh, a few weeks ago and just kind of heard an update on what's happening with, with that project. Um, heard a, a presentation of, you know, possible, you know, thoughts that they have about uh, the Intergenerational Community Center and also um, about the fire station. And while we were at that meeting, I saw um, David Eisen from Abacus who just, you know, we chatted. Of course, their, their contract is pretty well over at this point with us, but they have to give us their final report. He's kind of hanging on, hoping that, you know, there would be a time that we would have a, you know, a presentation that he would sort of lead. Um, he said he's w definitely willing to do that. He's going to wrap up the report, though, give it to us. And then when we're ready, anytime we're ready to have him come in and do any kind of a presentation, community meeting, whatever it may be, he's happy to come in and do that. So I just wanted to let you know that I, because that project sort of been hanging out there, um, without resolution. <laughs> so um, I just, just wanted to bring that up. And um, I think that's yeah, all I have. They, this, this, the, the intergenerational center, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're kind of talking about keep, keeping it over by the wheel of property there, and putting it over there. But there are some issues with that. You know, First of all, they have to tear the there's high water table over there. And there's also some issues with them. They'd have to tear the barn down. And then that means the, deep, the uh, parks and rec would have no place to keep their stuff unless the proposal included um, not just building the intergenerational center, but to you know provide some space for parks and rec to keep all their equipment. So there's a bit more to it than than uh, uh, than just building an intergenerational center. Obviously, we have the preference that they would move it out someplace close to the main road, but. It seems to be following a path right now where everybody says we, we own the land out there, so let's uh, put it there. And it sounds pretty simple until you start to get into the weeds with it, and then it's a little more, a little more difficult. Um, it's a beautiful site, though, for it. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. As close as you want. The park kids can walk to it. it so. Just seems like a, yeah. they go together pretty well. I guess I don't know or haven't heard all the things that maybe you've heard. <laughs> As far as just very high level looking in, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. And in a perfect world, if there was any way to kind of connect the corner of that parcel to that intersection where the new senior zoning that we did is yeah. going to be, that would be 
a pedestrian yeah. access through that area. Like, uh, yeah. well, they, oh, they, they, can they can walk up Hazel Street and then down yeah. into, into the park. Yeah. It's a little farther walk, but that's what they're going for anyway. <laughs> They go no, up a right. walk, that's making that sidewalk like, a little safer. You're, you're very close to that area. It just it needs to be a path. Yeah, the bridge. That corner the bridge. Like, like, the bridge kind of through the woodlands or wherever. Across the woodlands. You kind of go end up with priors, you know? Yeah. yeah. But not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, as that moves along, I'm, I'm on that facility, facility that the use uh, committee. Unfortunately, they have their meeting the same time as we did tonight. So that's why Danielle and I both got to go, but we can't go if we have to be here. <laughs> I did get a quick uh, message from Abby that it was going to be very, very brief um, yeah. and to not worry about missing it. Because I had said I'll dial in, you know, 7 o'clock. She said, just don't worry yeah. about it. Um, a, we'll go to that. Update minutes from everything. So it's, it's uh, um, they're, they're moving along in that direction along with the fire, fire department and everything else. So. Uh, but I have a question for you, you know, when did design consultants become G2? Oh, six months ago, maybe? Maybe more. Uh, you know, I think it was about a year ago, but they didn't change all of their, you know, email and yeah, everything. Long time, we still got design consultants. Right. Yeah. A G2 company, yeah, now they're fully part of G2. Yeah. But is, did, they, did they absorb design consultants? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, they look like to be a much bigger operation than having a place in Rhode Island, Connecticut. And yeah. So uh, well, what begs the question as far as contracts go, is that contract assignable? So we don't actually have a contract. Um, we just, per project, we um, have them give us a scope and contract with a quote, uh, and we contract every project separately. So, and we can do that with any consultant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's why we're having hearings and stuff on that. We haven't done that in a long time. So. Oh, um, you mean on our choice of peer review yeah, consultants? Yeah. Uh, we were talking uh, about proposals. We got proposals from uh, uh, yes. design firm, you know, not from engineering firms. Right. And then we went through the proposals and they came and pitched. You yeah. know, we picked, we picked some that we liked and they yeah. came in and pitched to us. Yeah. Do you want to do that again? Well, <clears throat> I guess uh, uh, one of the reasons that we started looking around was because we had a different company we were, and we were becoming unhappy with their, with their performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that. and that's why we said, okay, uh, and, and we did have a contract with them. Mm -hmm. And so once that came to an end and we, it was time to renew, mm -hmm. that's when we went out to bid and, and started looking at looking around mm -hmm. and, um, and ended up with design consultants. Yeah, you know, at one point they had a three-year contract and then another one. And yeah. as it was expiring a few years ago, I remember discussing with town council and they said, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just do it per project. And you can pick any consultant you want. Um, but if you'd rather have a more formal process where we have one person and we put it out again, I, you know, let me know. You know, we can Well, I think it's that. all, uh, I think the proof is in the pudding. Are we, are we getting good, are we getting the service and the response and the technical uh, backup that we need, and if we are, no change, no, you know, no real reason to, to change, but uh, we just have to make sure that, that that's what we're getting. Um, I mean, I do feel as though Dave is in town a lot. I mean, yeah. when I ask him to check something out, it's usually that day yeah. or the next yeah. day. Um, he's he's, he's very, been very... One thing about Dave is committed to it. He grew up here, right? Yeah. So he doesn't have any super ties to it. Yeah. He doesn't have ties to it anymore because it's father's past but yeah that's right. he he has he still has ties here because yeah. this is his this is his town well his brother still lives over him. oh does he oh yeah okay yeah. but you know he feels like it's he feels like he's connected here well he is he, he is. tries to take care of him he, he, he tries to make sure that people stay within the bounds yeah well, i think we probably do get um a little closer attention than perhaps some of the others would because oh, of yeah. that too but by the same token, I'm, you know, I'm suddenly realizing that we have a different name on there and not having been, uh, not knowing that when the change happened, I was a little you know, yeah. concerned that we, that we had, uh, somebody had bought out the contract and we weren't where we were supposed to be. And the other, and the other concern is, of course, pricing. As, um, you know, if the G2 company is billing him at a different rate than what we were 
getting bills from design consultants. I mean, I can ask for a schedule of their pricing. I mean, in terms of the staff people, he has seems to have had all the same people. I mean, his assistant didn't change. You know, some no. of the engineers under him didn't change. Some of them turned over because the job market, just the way no. it is now, no. they've had to hire a well, lot of well, people. It seems to me that, but, that, this, that he probably has access to a larger pool of people, which may be helpful as well. It, it may be, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I can ask him for a schedule of, of pricing, although actually I think we could probably see that from his bills because it, it has yes. the hourly rate for each of them. Um, well, that's okay. Um, I mean, today, electronics. Yeah, I know. Someone's free. He can send it to them as long as they know the state state law here. Yep. They can they can review it. You know, they can review it. Uh, it takes a sharp eye sometimes. It does. And I and I and I thinking of a particular project where the eye wasn't sharp enough and we've got issues. Oh, well, I know what you're <laughs> talking about. So um, it's just a thought. You know, I think at that time, his previous partner at DCI was in charge of the reviews. And yeah. I think that that was an issue with that particular reviewer, and he isn't with him anymore. Right. right. So, I mean, for, but that's, you know, I don't know. It's just my opinion about it. All right. Okay. Well, is it, we have nothing else that I guess we can address in tonight's meeting. Okay. And then our next meeting will be um, June 7th. Yes, June 7th. Um, and I did just want to mention, I realized, you know, for some of some of the, I'm sorry. I'm just making sure Rich. Had oh, it. yeah. Just, I, if the chair will allow me just one minute. Yeah, go ahead. But, but go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, just with regard to schedule, I realized that I, you know, kind of take for granted where some members have been around forever and just realize the way we do things, I, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of any off weeks, like generally, we just will schedule first and third Tuesday and we'll never just throw in a, a, a second or a fourth week without just checking with everyone first. Yeah. So I, and I'll, I'll communicate that to Ryan too, because mm -hmm. I, I realized that that was just sort of like a given that, you know, some of us know about, but I just wanted to mention that, you know, if there's ever an off date, that's not a first or third, we will definitely check with you before we, you know, assume that there's going to be a meeting schedule. So I just want to mention that. That's all. Just a quick request. Um, Did you go over the mic? Oh yeah, sure. Um, Rich Mulder, 57 Lisa Mulder. <laughs> um, poor Warren and David had to listen to me at the, you know, the candidate forums uh, repeat the same story all and over again. But um, it does come down to CPC. At one point, we were talking about AD policy, and I haven't heard that in a long time. And so I'm asking for the very reasons that you know I'm always advocating for keeping our seniors in town, making it affordable. Property taxes are an issue. Housing costs continue to go up. If we can revisit that policy, you know, and I know that there was some log yeah. jams, yeah. So, and so I would even encourage if you know if we have, if we have like agreed to stuff, you know, put that on one side, and then if we have things that require discussion, you know, I'm not in charge of the agenda of the select board, but I think the select board would welcome a visit to say, you know, this is what we have so far, and these are things that maybe we can discuss with you. But I think that assessment dwelling unit policy is very important. So we, um, and it's, it's one of the, it's one of the, I don't want to say it's easy, because it's not easy to get the policy done, but it's one of the easiest things we can do to help address this issue right now while we wait for longer term solutions. So, so just recently, uh, well, like a day or so ago, I heard um, on the news that the uh, federal government is talking about uh, beginning to put pressure on the states, to put pressure on the towns to modify the zoning to allow for more building and for more density in the areas because there's such a shortage of housing and the cost of housing has exceeded most people's ability to pay and they don't already have a house. And so the net result is that, that um, I know this state, we, we've already have this MBTA thing coming down. You know, I mean, that was, but they're going to get even more pressure to push against us as far as how our zoning and everything works. So, um, and I don't, they didn't, they were mostly talking about the, the building of new housing, not, and, and not necessarily about, you know, modifying existing housing. Um, I would not be in, in, until, until I heard from the, from the select board that they really were interested in having a discussion on this, because when we last talked about it, they were going to give us some time, and that was a year ago. Not really. Uh, but yeah. it didn't seem to be something that was on there, you know, something that they had any real interest in. And uh, so I would, I would uh, certainly, um, I would certainly like to have that conversation and, and find out 
if they got if they have issues, what they are, is to give us a chance to work on them. Because basically, we started this AEDU project because the the uh, building inspector was having issues and he asked for help. And so we said, okay, well, you know, we'll try to help. And then we just really didn't get the response that we had anticipated. And neither did he. And so we kind of dropped it. And okay. It's got to be something that it's got to be something that we all talk about, that we all work on together. Not, you know, you know, we can't just do it in the vacuum here because that didn't work. Yeah. So I, I'll do this because um, the world has changed a little bit. You know, the, there was that presentation in the fall. The select board recognized that we need to do more, so that's why we hired that new position, public services director. Um, and that's actually it sounds like it's a hire in a week or two, is what I've heard. Um, and that public services director is intended to bring together all the social services in town, youth services, parks and rec, library, all those types of things, elder services, things like that. But at the next board meeting, I will during um, our board reports, I'll let them know that if we, you know. Does the select board want to readdress this issue and bring it forward as more of a compelling issue? When I've discussed it with them informally, I've never asked them. I didn't realize we had given that indication. Yeah. They were in support of trying to do more for the people in town, this being one of those policies, because they keep talking about this. Well, so I'd be happy to it's actually two get part it. Thing there, though, okay. It's a two-part thing there, And the second part of this is the affordable housing overlay district that we that that we have where we tried to get some houses built and basically got shut down. And so again, that's another, uh, uh, you know, we've done a lot for housing, a lot, to, you know, we've developed housing plans, we've done all kinds of things, but until the select board says, okay, we know we'll support some of these things, um, for us to bring it to them, um, knowing that they're just going to say no is, doesn't make any sense. I agree. Okay, so I'll bring both issues to their table. Yes, and, and that those two issues are connected. That's, those are not two separate issues. Right. right. I no. don't disagree. So, so they need to come. To, they need to come together. Okay. And we need to have that discussion with them so that we can bring something to them that's acceptable to them and to the whole town. I mean, that's that was that was our goal in the beginning. Yeah. So. Um, um, but if I can say something too. Is another thing we need is a little bit more clarity from our council as well as our building inspector on what their findings have been in the last two years or reports have been what is legal and what's illegal, mainly what's legal. And what we're, what I, why I kind of pumped the brakes more, Rich, is that more and more when we, when we find out we can do this, it's like, oh, they, there's no law stopping them from doing that. The more we talk to the building inspector and then the legal opinions from our council would say, no, we can't stop them from doing that. We can't stop them from doing that. So I'm opposed to drafting bylaws that are illegal, you know what I mean, that are basically not enforceable by Massachusetts law. So it might feel great, we've created ADUs, but like if they're still, we, if they, we were never able to enforce them being built in the first place, what are we actually accomplishing? So I know it's not that broad, but I know there's, there's a lot of things that get brought up as examples that anyone could do right now and pull a permit with Mr. Noel and Bill, and he can't stop them. So us, by law, so by us putting a bylaw that says you can't do that, or you can do, what, I, I, that's the part I'm struggling with. Like why create a bylaw that is against the law? Or one that just agrees with what you can already do. Like you're allowed to drive your car, so we're gonna create a bylaw that says you're allowed to drive your car. Like we don't need to state something that we, that the residents of Massachusetts can already do by right. And that's what I'm struggling with. And so it needs to be defined because it's, they're talking out of both sides. Every time we hear from the building inspector or whatever, I'm not getting a crystal clear message of what's, what exactly is it. So if you come to us and say, I'm having tr trouble, and that's what it initially came to us. But then after we started to explore with council what's, what we're capable of stopping or allowing, during almost every example that Mr. Noel brought up, it, it, we weren't capable of stopping it. If we even put a bylaw in place, we, they'd be like, sorry, that's illegal. So I just, that's the part I'm struggling with. Yeah. So but, I, I still, I still, I want everybody to know, I'm, I'm probably the only one it, you know, that's maybe in opposition, but I am open to it. I just, I don't want to do an exercise that is 
in the face of Massachusetts general law. Just, yeah. It's so, just, I know all the communities have them, but I just. Yeah, I just, I'm just going to bring that but up. But they have them, and then so kind of, are they but just are they, to feel good? You know, because if they're illegal. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to ask, are, is it basically all the communities have created their, their rules are basically just violate the, state law? Well, it can't be bylaws not because all. that goes to the AG. Yeah. Not, can not I explain all the all difference? We, we do, right? I'm sorry, can I just explain the difference? Yeah. Okay, so there's a there's one thing that's allowed and there's one thing that's not allowed. Okay, so what an ADU bylaw would legalize would be having a full separate unit that doesn't have an open um, open free access between right. the main house and the accessory house. Right. right now, you're not allowed to build that here. You have to have it open. An ADU bylaw would legally enable us to have yeah. a house put on a unit that is closed off and has entirely separate entrances right. and exits and no free access within the building. That's the only thing it would do. And the reason to well, do actually, that. That's not the only thing it would do. Well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't it, say it's the it only thing it would do. It would legitimize a lot of the stuff that's, being, that, that's already been already done. done. Right. And it would also provide the fire department with a much better idea of how many uh, people that might be in the building if it, they come to a fire. I mean, there are a lot of positives to it. But I'm, I'm, I think you're oversimplifying. Well, I'm not what, oversimplifying. What I think our, our, our draft goes beyond what Danielle just said, though. Our, so, I mean, if you want to well, start yeah, from somewhere, and then so having a draft that does more than what that well, we started with, described. We started with the bylaw that had uh, passed muster. Passed whose muster? Well, it the, the, the came from Reading. So, so it obviously, it well, passed muster. Well, I mean, I would not, my goal is not to make North Reading Reading. You know, it's on the CPC. No, I think so. what he means, though, Dave, is that it was legal when the AG. Well, yeah. I mean, there's one have to do with there's, so, there's an ADU bylaw in almost most of these towns. I mean, okay. so we could so we can certainly do that. But one, of the, but another one of the very important things that it does, in in, in which is uh, not so which which isn't so relevant in towns like Reading or Wakefield or some of these other locations. Is it requires that the board of health look at it and make sure that the septic system is adequate for the additional people that are going to be in that house. Now, and that's and that's a you know, um, people don't necessarily know that that's that that's important until it becomes a problem. Again, you just use an example. I'm all for examples that make sense, but that's another example where Jerry, if a person's adding a bedroom or adding, say, really fixtures. They're able. He's able to say, "Do you have go to the board of health? Do you have a capacity on your septic system? You've exceeded it." But that's you, just normal building, that's so it's true. not has nothing but to do with But if they could do it by right, if you, if what you were saying, if they could just do it by right, which is what you're what you're bringing forth here. No, um, I mean, they, then then what's going to happen is they're not going to do that. They're never. Gonna, and, right. and then when the problem comes up, they're going to say, um, and, "And we already have an example many years ago where somebody let 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 it." Uh, Building inspector, everything. Let something go because you know, hey, it could be, it could be okay. And the next thing you know, we're being sued. So um, not us, but the town. Right. Yeah. But uh, but again, but that's because uh, they didn't follow the rules, we can, even though they existed. So because they said, oh, you can just it by right, by right. So so some level of an ADU bylaw is necessary. Your points are well taken. They could do quite a bit without it. But with it, that, that legitimizes some of what they're doing so that there's a record of it, so that there's inspections on some of these things that wouldn't get inspected otherwise, um, I think just makes, makes, a, uh, makes sense. And I agree that there's, that there's, um, that has to, it doesn't have to be such a, a heavy handed law. And I, I agree. Yeah, I, but, I, but I think it has to have, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe so, but it has to have. Some of the really important items in it that for the inspections are all required, but we're giving something back to them. We're letting them close a section completely off, and and uh, and uh, making sure that they don't do something to hurt themselves. I mean, that's really part of the or others. Yeah, or other, yeah, that, yeah. It's part of the part of the process. So, so again, <coughs> so let's draft something up. I mean, I, I, I like your ideas, but let's draft something up that that covers the bases that we know need to be covered. And don't and isn't onerous and, and then maybe we yeah, think that just select what I just said, Mr. Chairman, like is just if we're gonna do that, can we have either council present or or things like that that are actually can speak to I the think things. after we draw it up because I think we I think sitting here we have a pretty good idea of what we want to do. 
You let them read it. And they you let them yeah, I'm just I'm I'm not an attorney, so I don't know right. what's allowed. Well, that's okay. We, we're not. I, again, I don't. I'm an attorney, and I don't know what the law. But it is the you, know, <laughs> right, you don't work in that, right? You're in a different part of the law. It's more just we just kept getting kind it's of the, the goalposts kept moving. Yeah. Every right. time well, there was right. something, and I, that's all I'm saying. So that was frustrating on my end because I agree with you. you, you came to, it first started as came to us for help to prevent people from doing X, Y, Z, with the thought of maybe perhaps allowing some things, but the, the things that to help prevent, there we he never really needed help to like prevent because they by law they were allowed. So I just was having struggling with that, like how we going to create something that well, so, legally so, any okay, attorneys so, so there's a pushback the pushback push back. on this is going to be is going to be from a lot of a lot of the high end houses where they don't want their neighbor to have a two family that's where the pushback will come from yeah i just think we need to be honest with all of yeah. the residents that you know the hard thing for me from this is that after that habitat it doesn't feel like there's a lot of political will on this level. On this level. You're right. And so it feels uncomfortable for us to have to come up with a solution if we're going to take another idea like Habitat and just get kind of surprised at the, 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 the negative feedback from the select board on what, quite frankly, Nicholas, that, that was a slam dunk, easy yeah. decision. Even the yeah, even yeah. the house the, the the guy wanted the house. Yeah. And yeah. they said no. And the FinCom even liked it. Right? Yeah, yeah, everybody That's liked it. it. Except yeah. for the select board. And this is a much bigger political hot potato yeah. than that. It is so yeah. So yeah, I almost feel like until the select board tells us what they want, how are we supposed to come up with it? But this but that's and that's fair fair and I and I agree. And so I was hundred percent support of that. I just wonder I might be hesitant on ADUs, but uh, but I, I think though, um, I think we do need to come up with something that we think we can get through the select yeah. there, if that's going to be what we do. Well, I think. Yeah. Our, I mean, I that's think, the point. Is I think, I think our, we have to be realistic because what we are doing can dramatically change the town as far as look, yeah. Yeah. and it'll actually impact not the nice uh, neighborhoods with the big one acre plus lots. It's going to actually impact the smaller lots if you. And I don't want to discriminate. Like I think everyone should be able to do it. So it's not we're not going to just have this be people with the one acre lots. But when you get tighter in there in those twelve thousand, fifteen thousand square foot lots, and you're allowing people to kind of max out, and they pay the entire front yard, and there's five cars, six cars, it changes the look of a neighborhood that used to have just yep. a garage and a house and have that beautiful feel to it, tight. You know, you would you like that's one of the reasons I don't, I that's just, one of the reasons yeah, that I'm Reading careful. put that's one of the reasons that Reading put so I would not sizes. use Reading's uh ADU the well, more you, read whatever, through, but the more you drive through Reading, I'm sorry, that's not what I want my town. Well it's one of the it's one of the reasons that the towns that do have these kind of bylaws put size some sizes in there. So if you can't put that size in you can't do it. Right. So to prevent from uh, and I've read that from and, the different ones I've looked yeah. at. Yeah, and, and, and I think so, that should be on the so table. I. So, so the other, but the other part of it is in this town is that you still have that septic system issue where you need right. you, you need a thousand square yeah, feet someplace. Yeah, to put a you know you know I mean eight hundred no, square foot field, a thousand square foot field. You got four bedrooms. You know you need right. a big piece of land just for the septic system. So right. So so it, it's some of it will be self solving. In some. But if it's, in the, if it's in the proposals, they don't have to get as far as the building inspector or the health inspector. They'll see it right away. Oh, I'm going to increase my septic system size. Yeah. And they'll stop them right there. So we don't. So we. So they don't so waste, we any, they don't waste any money. Well, that's that my worry too. Is it's very, you know, it's very. Oh, oh, we we can draft something up, but it's very expensive for seniors to put one of these into their home, especially if they're faced mm -hmm. with. I have a small lot and I want to add one and oh now I need I need to upgrade my septic system. And that's what I'm afraid of. They really lend themselves and all the ones that I've seen in town built are mainly people very much the one to five percenters oh, yeah. of yeah. this town are the ones that are all building them. Yeah. And so it's kind of it's really quite regressive, right? In the well, sense most where of them are building if we really do it, we're helping them make now make their home have a if you will, multi-family, I don't care what you call it, but it, it's now now this house is worth more, 
they can flip it and sell it and then those two families living in it or whatever depending on the size and some of these because they are illegal are pretty good I think, size i think the majority of them are being done to accommodate family members I agree, Warren, but I'm and just I saying think most of them are done in work out, in the keeping higher Keeping the family unit together is not a bad thing. It's it's a good good. To your point, though, on that, though, I mean, if you're a senior family and you want to stay in your home and you want to make some changes to either have caregivers be able to stay with you, how we set up these rules and also, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking without the experience here, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm imagining that if you want to get a, a loan on those kind of things, the restrictions on what you can do with that property are going to impact the kind of loan that you're going to get. Right. So if we put overly restrictive rules around these, it's going to make it more difficult for a senior family. Yeah, to, but I don't think to, we to, need to. to I don't think we need to put overly. I mean, I'm agreeing with Dave on a lot of well, this. Overly I don't too. think we. I don't yeah. think we need to overly make it overly restrictive. We just have to make it rational, so that we protect people uh, from doing something that they probably shouldn't do. You know, which is. I mean, you know, because by right, so they go and they add all the stuff on and they and they add a family member and they add a bedroom on and before you know it, they got trouble and they're like, why didn't you let me do this, you know? We got a site backyard and, you know. So just, just looking a, at simple, a simple ADU law that gives, that, 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 that makes sure that some boxes are checked, but by the same token gives them the right to close that part all the way off. I think that's workable. And, and you know what, Brian? If it's successful, you, you can expand it a little bit. Yeah. That's the whole point. Like I just found that the original, the first draft was like, you know, detached and everything. It's like, are you guys really serious about getting this through? Okay, so yeah. let's so let's leave so, it like this. I mean, with, let's, let's leave it like this with Rich. Yeah. If they're, you know, we'll we'll if if you come back and tell us, yeah, they're they're willing to sit with you and and and, and go over something. Or come then, to us. Then why don't we? Okay, yeah, either way, I'll come to us. Then we'll try to you know work together, try to put together some kind of a, a very basic. Uh, with the things that we know we need, and maybe a list of things we don't need in this bylaw, and and then see if we can and bring that to them and see what they what they say. Yeah, they might knock a few off or add a few, a few things. Yeah, probably what would work best is because well, we're going too far in this meeting. Because if Barbara walked in, she's not here anymore. But if she walked in that door, she would chastise you. <laughs> you, you we've gone almost a half an hour talking about something that is not on the agenda oh. at all. Okay. Yeah, you know, and, 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 you, and you're getting into the design developing. That's true. So, so we'll just all agree. So it's more. Right. Deep. Can we can we get back in onto this discussion, which is what Mr. Yeah. Walmers requires? Right. I think as long as we get the backing of the select board, and that uh, we don't go in there blind like we've gone in the past. Yeah. Point, Mr. Hayden. Yeah. Point so I, I'd be happy to. Uh, right. I, I, what I would ask for is the latest like whatever we have for the ADU. I wouldn't want to hand that out to them. I just want to be very brief. Like whatever the latest information cool. is, so this has been a long time since I thought about it. Yes. And same for the housing right. overlay, whatever, maybe the last, whatever you presented at the last meeting, because I understand where that where that came from as well. Okay. Yeah, we don't know where, we don't know where the habitat people might have gone to another town and said, well, look at these guys. <laughs> They'll always be interested. Yeah, they are. Especially in that St. Teresa's property, they, they really want that. In fact, they check in every so often. And I always say, you know, be patient, we'll keep yeah, it up. I mean, it's, it's just, it doesn't make any sense yeah. that they said no to this stuff. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, happy, it, 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 I'm happy to go back. The select this. board, the select board is supposed to live on what's happened prior to that, and we've got a unanimous support of the select board in town meeting to make this overlay. Yeah, district. and they shot it down. Five people who weren't even around yeah. shot it down. Or four, at least four people. I don't know what your idea was, Rich, but so I don't want to put words in your mouth because I, okay. yeah, yeah. It, it just it made no sense to us, and nobody told us up front. Yeah, okay. Well, again, so if you can, whatever, even if it's just the slides from that, that meeting, that'd be fine. Yeah, I'll send just, you I, the latest. I just, you know, it, the selection board should be behind making progress, even if we can't agree with that progress. Yeah, we should be, no, we should be behind making progress. You know, about. the whole thing was they want to write uh, something, rules to do this. Yeah, no, what he said was they want to set up, see what, uh, set, uh, establish a policy. Policy. And we tried to tell them that the policy was in the bylaw they approved in 2008. <laughs> right, and they could have also let the policy was already there. And then held, held selling the property because it was still in select board's jurisdiction yeah. to release the property to make the policy at that point. Yeah. But they didn't want to do any of that. Yeah. You know, it was like, just shut them down. Yeah. It was kind of embarrassing for us. 
All right, so right. anything you can brief me with that would be great, and then yeah. I'll be happy to try to uh, revive it. And before you spend a lot of time or do anything that you think is a waste of time, yeah. I'll do what I can to try to get some consensus so that, you know, I, I think there's support there. But we I don't think it's a waste of time if we've got backing. Yeah. That's, that's, you know. I'm, I'm trying to find No, 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 I understand what I'm you're saying. I'm just, I'm just kind of saying it a little different. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm now going to adjourn to keep us from getting in. Thank you. Let's get out of trouble. Feel free to travel. Thanks, Rich. Okay, thank right. you, Phil.